alaikum salam wa rahmatullah so do you have any pr tips practical tips for when we feel we have failed our tests on this path to prevent feeling of shame and unworthiness from overwhelming us practical tips <laughs> Yeah, we have teachings that are my practical tips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, make a step far and try again, inshaAllah. Definitely not an easy path. The whole point, if you picked up today, was that they're not capable of doing anything. That for people who think that they can do an awrad and they can do this and they can do that and they can fight shaitan, they're already lost. You do everything as an imitation and then you give support and then you go out and feed people and then you do good deeds so that these grand souls, you catch their nazar. If their nazar comes upon you and by means of their gaze they uplift the servant to the good deeds and actions. So we're doing what we do as an imitation, not as you think you're levitating and you're getting off the ground by it because you have to be open and honest with ourselves The shaitan is attacking from every direction. And no matter what we do shaitan is continuously attacking and when you pray shaitan is attacking and when you eat shaitan is attacking and whatever you're doing of ibadah shaitan is attacking. So when they understood that they realized that these holy nights, these feeding projects, these birthdays, wiladats and, and wahfats and, and passings, this way of love and attaching ourselves to these grand souls by means of love it's that their support comes, their madad comes. When the madad comes it begins to uplift the servant and dress the servant. With the permission of Allah that Allah gives them a permission, they love you, they want to be with you, they're not making it. And when the servant comes with humility, they know they're not making it. But they have to know that, if they think they're great they're already lost in, in the hands of shaitan. Anyone whom recognizes they are weak, the da'if and they are completely overtaken by shaitan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Like a thousand ifrit, a million ifrit are all over you, your hand is barely standing up to keep your madad. Then the madad and the support reaches the servant whom is humble. That, that's the, the, the images that Allah put in all of these popular media. That when they found that their fight was completely overwhelmed, that the amount of evilness was too much around them, at that time Allah sends the support. So that the servant has to recognize that at all times they're weak and that they have they have nothing but God's hope and their Divine grace to reach to them. That one becomes humble and their way towards Allah is always inshaAllah humble. For if arrogance should come in then means that shaitan now took the seat and is sitting upon that uh, being. So yeah alhamdulillah it is riddled with failure, go out do good deeds, give sadaqah, give charity. Every time you make a du'a on the app, click at the bottom and give charity. Every time you're about to do something, give charity.
prosperity. Every time you, you, you want something from Allah go out and feed somebody. If you can't feed somebody then give charity so that they can feed people with that. Those are the things that take away all the difficulties, those are the things that multiply our hisab. Like a, a, bo a bounty that comes to the servant in ways they never imagined, not from their own action. You don't get the bounty of Allah because you prayed. But you do get the bounty of Allah when you gave charity. And if you gave enough charity then when you prayed your prayer actually counted for something. So it's the reverse way. Not that people think that their action has the bounty and Allah is impressed by it. But when they're humble they say, I have nothing Ya Rabbi. Well you have something then they go out and do good deeds. The good deed saved them so that when they made their salah Allah listened. Allah raised that salah and that action. So it's always the reverse way. If arrogance comes, they say, I don't have to do that, I'm so good, I just made my prayer. But the way of humility that these Sultanul Awliya are teaching, because look at their du'as, they're asking that we come through the, the door of disbelief and wrong actions, that was their teaching. That to continuously lower oneself, give and do in the way, a khidmat in the way of Allah then your salah may have power if Allah found acceptance in what you do and how you serve. Your zikr has power, your love and ishq has a power because of the actions and deeds inshaAllah. So alhamdulillah the approaches are based on humility inshaAllah. Someone asked also another question, someone was asking about different paths and, and the, along their life and the different things they've done and, and it's important and I, I can give only by analogy is that in this bag of life whatever we collected from everywhere we went, if I kept it in a bag and put a little bit of copper, a little bit of silver from this person, learn something from this person, put this, put this, put this. And then when I find the gut to the treasure and let's say a super precious pure 100% pure gold, if I threw that also in the bag and shook it up and then said, now I'll dispense this to people, you ruin the purity of what you mixed this pure path with. Means whatever you learned on your journey it's not meant for us to put into a bag and mix it with this, right? So the silver was good for the silver, it got me to who I am. I got to the copper, I used the copper for who I am. It should be in my life examples and my, li my life understanding. But when I got to the gold I didn't mix anything with it. As a result of how your shaykh is teaching you, I didn't mix anything with it. Had I mixed my shaykh's teachings of immense gold with all my bronze and silver and copper and dirt and charcoal from my other understandings and readings and life experiences, you would have got a very different type of teaching. So if that analogy makes sense, when the gold is pure mix nothing with it. Whoever you are that should be your life experiences but you put pure gold out and you put pure gold in. So it means that what they taught me came in as a pure gold and what I teach is the pure gold of what I was taught. I don't mix it with anything else because then you destroy the purity. So just like if you go to a jewelry store and say, well this gold looks a different color, looks like reddish. Well, we may have some copper, maybe some zinc or something we threw in it. So the students of people and future students and people who may learn from you, you don't want them learning from your mixture of copper, dust, dirt and gold because then it becomes really low-grade Naqshbandi teachings and it was a no-no, it was tariq al-adab. Whatever we learned that was, you know, put inside ourselves and our being. But when we got to the gold everything else was thrown out. 
every understanding was thrown out, every knowledge was thrown out, emptied ourselves so as to be a, a vessel and a vehicle for this reality. And as a result we wrote, we wrote, we wrote, we wrote and then humble seclusions and teachings and realities until those writings they become alive and the they quantify, qualify the person that, yeah they're not mixing this with dirt and other things. They're taking these teachings and bringing the teachings out for the people. So keep it to be pure inshaAllah. Many people have many experiences and many sort of variations of backgrounds and they want to mix everything and that's a, that becomes against the adab. The madad won't reach that person because the shaykhs won't encourage to give the person more when they know that they're mixing it with things because then it's no longer a pure source, it becomes a contaminated source and can be a source of big problems, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, we were taught the pillars of Islam from dunya scholars, what is the underlying spiritual realities of each of the five pillars. No way, <laughs> you can read the books, <laughs> that is the whole teaching. We have all those realities on Hajj and, and all those teachings on the Hajj, the meditation, everything. So that's our whole path, that the, the pillars are, are not something to, to be proud of, that somebody take a shahada now they feel they're better than other people. And then uh, they come for salah and think that they're better than other people. Then they begin to fast and they think they're better than other people. And then they want to go for hajj, then they think they're definitely better than old people. But this, these pillars were meant to humble us to be better servants to Allah So our whole spiritual path is based on these pillars. So the shahada has to go deeper means that you have to bear witness to what you're testifying to. So when you say ashadu means you bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammadun Rasulullah is the messenger. But did you see that? So it means your shahada is not correct. If the shahada is not correct because you don't bear witness to what you're saying, then every other usul is based on something incorrect, right? The first one had to be true, that's how the shaykhs can show people they didn't achieve anything, Don't, no need to think we're arrogant. Your shahada didn't reach to actually witnessing, so now you iqam as salah, now you're going for salah. If the shahada wasn't true, the salah is imitated. Why would your salah be real if your shahada didn't witness what you had to witness? If your salah is not true, then your Sa'um of Ramadan is what? Because the one who leaves Salah leaves Islam. So now their Salah is <laughs> not real, their Ramadan is, is imitation. And if you're, you're, you're not seeing, your praying is questionable, your Ramadan is questionable, your Hajj is a tourist vacation. But no problem, Allah says, we accept it, no problem. But from awliya they're coming and teaching it, you did that the first round, alhamdulillah, let's go back now the other way. Let's start from the hajj and now enter into the reality of your hijrah, that you see yourself at the Kaaba and that you're always in the presence of, of that Kaaba. And as a result of that Kaaba then your whole life is now to go back into your fasting and that every, every sense of your being has to be fasting, right? So that's the muraqaba. Keep the presence of the Kaaba, keep the presence of Prophet all the time. So the person who did the five pillars got to the hajj but it was all imitated. Well every, every journey is a circle, right? You get from one point, you went all the way, you did your hajj, oh congratulations, now your journey starts. Because now that you went for hajj, now sit every day remembering you're in the presence of the Kaaba, in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And from that presence say, I'm going to go now back into Ramadan, Psalm. And I'm going to fast with all my senses at all times. 
so that my fasting is perpetual. I'm going to fast all the time with my hearing, my seeing, my eyes, what we talked about last night. Means those whom, whom the mutahirun that the, uh, what we said, those whom Allah want to grant these realities, Allah is going to ask them, what your eyes are doing here? What your, your ears are doing here? Why are you sitting in these things and, and looking at those things and doing this and doing that and you want it to be from the mukhlas? So means then their hajj, their continuous state of Ramadan, if they're continuously fasting then as soon as they enter into their salah, their salah is a continuous meditation and a continuous state of fasting. They don't want to hear bad, they don't want to see bad, they isolate themselves more and more from people because people are just, you know, they're all over the place now. If you sit for five minutes with people they just want to gossip and talk and say everything bad. So they take to themselves, now their salah is like in an isolation because they're keeping the presence of the Kaaba, they're continuously fasting with all their senses, now they're making salah present with their heart. Now what happens? At-tahiyyad lillah wa tahibad lillah wa salaamu alayka ayyuha nabi And then they begin to see Sayyidina Muhammad Now the shahada became real because even if you can feel the presence of Prophet that becomes real. Now you're in the oceans of a real shahada. You feel the presence of Prophet you begin to have dreams of the presence of Prophet Now the shaykhs took you into your salah, activated your real shahada. At that time that servant now is becoming a real servant because every time they reach that shahada, every time they make their shahada they are in a state of witnessing. As soon as they go into their salah they're again in a state of hudur and presence and they're in a perpetual state of fasting and they're always in the presence of the Kaaba. So if they can unlock that then that become a perpetual and not a a, a once in a lifetime tourism package that you have to be continuously in the state and the presence of the Holy Kaaba and the presence of Madinat al Munawwara and all of its realities and we have the whole talk on that. And the hajj books, so you have to buy three hajj books and give them away, keep one and give two away as gift. This is the holiday season for people, you should buy the books and give them as gifts to people whom won't appreciate it or may appreciate it. InshaAllah. <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, I recently tried to meditate but after I completed it for a full day my thumbs remained very hot. What to do Sayyidi for this? Meditation is only five minutes, what did you do for a whole day? So the meditation is only for a few minutes every day after your salah, connect your heart. But if you're doing something for a whole day, yeah, maybe you're holding your hands, they went numb, you burn your fingers or they cut off the circulation. So it's just a few minutes every day, consistent, 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 daily, daily, daily for just a few minutes to connect your heart inshaAllah and uh, energy begins to flow and the energy comes, it can burn, it can be cold, it can be hot and that's just the energy inshaAllah, nothing to worry about. You have to get the meditation book, timeless reality. Yeah, any of those types of questions like they have to get two books before they can ask a question like that. Means you didn't read the book, if you read the book then you would have much more advanced questions. But if you're going to come and ask those kind of questions then immediately Yahya is going to send you the invoice for three books. <laughs> Say this uh, person keeps asking this question for the last few weeks. Uh, as salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. First, yeah, yeah, send an invoice. <laughs> invoice. Sorry. For three weeks, they're asking the same question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sayyidi, is it bad to watch anime or is it completely haram? 
I think they've asked that before, it's asked and answered. You know in the court of law they say, asked and answered because the attorney already <laughs> stipulated to these things. Yeah, before you give any verdict of haram and these, these are heavy duty verdicts so better not to use those on this forum that you know, haram is haram and halal is halal and, and you know things that are makru and, and that maybe not good for you and, and questionable for you that's you know something you have to, to take. What was the… we were talking about yesterday, so if you were present yesterday that was all about the… what was the one? Tafakkur and Mutta. Shaza, what were we talking about yesterday? No, we had a word, Mutahiruna. It was in the ayah that we recited yesterday that Ali is Waliun, Ali is a wali for the Mutaqeen. Allah waliun al mutaqeen, right? Ali is, Allah is the wali, is the guardian of the mutaqeen because the whole surah, last month's surah was about tafakkur and contemplation. So who's going to guard those people whom are contemplating? Because these are like an elite group of people where Allah gives them a category like an elite status, none know it. So immediately he's now sectioning out an elite group of believers. None know these things but the tafakkirun and I'm the one whom is a guardian for them that I take the, the case directly. So means these mutaqeen whom they have a immense yaqeen on all their five senses. So we said if you understood that last night then 100% of these questions probably can be resolved because the shaykh should be able to train you to understand your path and not take it for you, right? You should be, have been given enough information by now to, to balance and judge yourself through sharia without reading advanced courses and advanced literature and having memorized everything in Arabic. Allah says, I want you to be mutaqeen. So means what? Last night we described, you have to have a very clarified, clear hearing because Allah is going to judge your ear on sincerity. That did you reach sincerity in your hearing? Did you reach sincerity in your seeing? Did you reach sincerity in your breathing? Did you reach sincerity in your touch? Did you reach sincerity in how you feel? Every five all the… and the reach sincerity in your taste, this is the goal. If that's the goal then shaykh, can I go to this concert, uh, can I go to this place, can I go to that place? Do you think that you're going to reach the yaqeen and the certainty of, of hearing? And that's why the shaykhs when they understood their path they began to isolate more. Right? Isolate more. Why? Because they understood that, how am I crying every night that Allah open my hearing, open my, my spiritual hearing and I'm listening to all these ridiculous things and then crying to Allah ask for, for, for yaqeen on hearing? It doesn't happen. So then Allah said, why you don't sit and clean your ears before you ask me to, to make your sincerity checked off on your ears? Then the same servant may be asking, oh I want to see, I want to see through my heart what the shaykh is talking about, like I can see nothing, I close my eyes and just there's uh, flashes of lights are going around and that's not seen. But I want to see through my heart, then you're watching every, every forbidden thing and taking your eyes to places where forbidden things are seen. You can answer that question yourself because then Allah was to ask you that, well, what you're doing with your eyes? So the mutaqeen. And that talk from last night is equipping people to have their own guidance. There may not be a time in which you know you, you can ask every type of question you want. The shaykh should have equipped people to be able to understand the, the common sense in everything. So if I'm trying to be certified by Allah sincere on my senses 
Then depending upon how much sincerity you want, what are you doing with those senses? So you're, you're out in a place and everybody's smoking hookah but you're not. You're breathing in all the smoke, you'll never reach sincerity of your breath. So we, where you take yourself, stop and that's where you'll find yourself. So you have to ask yourself, oh, I'm not going to reach the sincerity, I'm not going to, my breath is being contaminated, my eyes are definitely being contaminated, my ears are being contaminated. So then give up this mutaqeen and just come for the food and enjoy the zikr, that's it. But if the person wants to achieve then they have to self-regulate themselves. They don't need somebody to give them like a fatwa that gives them permission to do everything. That's why they ask is that they can get a permission to do something. If you think it's not hurting your eyes then why would it be haram? If you're looking at anime that's inappropriate anime then it's again forbidden for your eyes. So if it's just you know somebody doing karate then what, what's the problem with that? But if they're doing you know anime now can be very graphic and very sort of uh, inappropriate. So no, then if you're trying to clean your eyes no. Then these questions on music and can we listen to music, we have to clarify first of all praise is praise. Music is haram by Prophet describing music is forbidden because anything that agitates the heart and takes you away from Allah of course has to be forbidden. So then imagine somebody who's trying to purify their hearing so they can hear their conscience and have good hearing with, I want to hear my soul. Then you turn on a station that every other word is a cursed word, so it's actually cursing going into your ears. So then you regulate yourself, say, how much I want to achieve and then I have to put my struggle upon myself. So everyone has their own jihad. You know Jihad al-Akbar is the fight against oneself and that's the great fight. Somebody says, now I want to fight, put your hijab on, put your kufi on, grow your beard. Fight against every negative energy and put the sunnah on and carry the sunnah whenever you can. Do all these things as a struggle against oneself. It's not for other people, it's for myself. And that's what's important in all of the, this, this approach so that the person has enough tools to govern themselves. So wherever they are they're stuck and they're thinking of something. You think of these lectures and these teachings that, you know, what am I trying to achieve now? Am I going to get Allah to open my eyes if I'm in this place? You say, probably yes or no. If you can say yes then alhamdulillah. If you say no then stuff it Allah and take yourself away from there inshaAllah. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. So the, how does one sanctify sense of touch? Your hawa. Yeah, the, the sense of, of hawa is the sense of becoming lat latif, to become subtle in your energy. And that has to do with the hawa and the, the senses of desire. When the servant is too much into their desires and everything to be fantastic, they have to train themselves through pain and discomfort. So in the earlier stages in life you sit in a very uncomfortable position. So when you meditate you would sit on knees for long periods of time until they would go numb and have problems and, and have pain and sleep on the floor, it was, it was not comfortable, rough mat, the, whatever Prophet was teaching. So it means that even Sayyidina Muhammad with everything of Allah's creation granted at his disposal, he sat, slept on a bamboo in which the markings of the bamboo, why? So that to combat the hawa and the, the, the desires overtaking the human body. And as a result they don't wake up for prayers and everything's just too good, too comfortable. So in their early years of struggle you struggle hard, put difficulty upon the self, put fasting upon the self, uh, sitting in uncomfortable positions upon the self so that to cause a dis-ease in the body. 
in which to train yourself so that to bring the hawa down. When it goes down and Allah grants a sincerity in that struggle then they can become more latif, more subtle. And through their meditation and the building in their meditation practices because how can they meditate if they keep falling asleep? So then they sit on their knees and they make their connection and they make the connection, make the connection until there's so much pain they can't sleep. So they can't fall asleep because everything is, is not in a comfortable position. As a result they're making a very strong connection and that's when the hawa is going down and Allah is giving them to be very subtle so they can feel with their energy and with their soul. But the one whom has no feeling from their soul they're numb to everything, they feel absolutely nothing. You say, did you just feel that? Absolutely not. Even you know the devil himself come into the room they won't feel it. So it's a matter of the training of how what to go down and then the subtlety of their energy to go up. And the more they become subtle the more they're understanding these vibrational fields, right? So this, this realm is everything is a vibration. So you're a vibration in which I can see, right? If I make myself to become more subtle what happens? I'm subtle now to other vibrations. So these creatures that are moving through these realms, they're moving through on vibrations. They vibrate at a different frequency and they come through our frequency. So the one whom is becoming subtle to energy is picking up all these different vibrations of energy and that's what's important. As they pick up these vibrations then they can sense when something is coming into their energy field. And they can hear the buzzing, they can hear all sorts of sensors, they can have a, a compulse where their energy is feels like it's being attacked at a distance when an energy is coming into their field of energy. So these are the important states to, re, to achieve of a subtle nature and that's by training and pushing hawa down, by coming against the nafs, by coming against hawa, by coming against dunya and all of that is a fight against the shaitan. So those are the four enemies in which the servant and you can go to Nu Muhammad and fight the four enemies and uh, that's a fight against these uh, four desires so that uh, to make the soul to be whole and powerful. The soul is broken by these four. The nafs breaks it in one direction, the, the hawa breaks in another direction, the dunya and all the de dunya desire breaks in another direction and shaitan then manipulates all of them, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam As solar flares increase in recent days, I was told that these solar rays affect our vibration energy. Is there a reality to this and what do you advise we do of practices? Yeah sure, everything is a isharat, everything is a guidance from Allah We started off tonight talking about the sun, that the sun is eternal and the sun has a reality of eternity. And the guidance is coming from the sun for the inhabitants on earth. So there's an energy and there's a, a Muhammadan reality governing the soul, the, the sun. So that, that is the isharat and guidance that comes uh, from the sun and energy that comes into the atmosphere and uh, sends out what needs to be sent out to the entire galaxy that is under this control of this sun. So this sun has the 11 planets under its domain, dominion. And that representative is a Muhammadan representative where Allah describes malaikati wa ruh bi idni rabbihum. With the power of Allah it has a continuous signal coming out with they call I think they're photons, the, these rays that penetrate everything. So these are the Wi-Fi for our understanding. How we're making a Wi-Fi with a mesh net, the sun is our Wi-Fi. It's sending signals out throughout this galaxy. <clears throat> and then there's universes that have a central sun which is a Wi-Fi for their existence. And in the middle of all of them the strongest Wi-Fi which is the strongest presence of Sayyidina Muhammad a tariq. 
it was like they call I think a pistol star and that sends a signal to all the suns and to all the universes and to all of creation. And that's in Surah Al-Qadr, Anzalnahu fi Laylat Al-Qadr, Madraka Laylat Al-Qadr, Laylat Al-Qadr khayra min alfi shah, Tanazal malaikati wa ruh bi idni rabbihim kullil amr, kullil amr. Every command by the permission of Allah is coming through these malaika who will send it out like the photons and the ruh is the Muhammadan representative of Sayyidina Muhammad upon that station. And that's what Sayyidina Yusuf was describing to his father in Surah Al Yusuf that, Oh Allah made me to be the, the one whom is in control of the sun and the moon and the eleven planets are under my feet, under my dominion. Sayyidina Yaqub understood the very, very high station, don't tell your brothers who they're all prophets, they're going to be jealous of you. And when he achieved his station, when Sayyidina Yaqub, a prophet of Allah came to see his son after all these years, what he did? He went into sujood, a prophet of Allah and Allah's telling the story so it can't be bad. A Prophet of Allah went into sujood because he, he's now in the presence of a Prophet who achieved an immense station when literally the sun and the moon, eleven planets were under his throne, under his dominion. And that, that is that Allah, this is a, a sign and the reality of awliya, that awliya are not in charge of this earth but they're in charge of the entire created universes. Subhana rabbi ya rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen Muhammadillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs. Our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.